Hi, welcome to Open Hand Farm. Today I hope to give you some garden tips and some encouragement as you work in your garden also. The first thing I want to show you before we go out into the garden to see what we've got going on is I am never good at keeping track of my harvest. So by the end of the summer, I'm like, I don't even think we got very much. And so I decided this year that was going to be my number one thing to do. No matter how little, I was going to weigh everything or measure everything before I processed it or we ate it or whatever. So I wanted to show you my very simple way that I am doing that. I have a tablet that I leave sitting in my kitchen. My first thought was to do post-it notes, stick it on the wall, and at the end of the day, record them in my wonderful garden journal that I love. It has sheets that you can add your harvest to. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a card to that up here. Um, be sure and check that out because I love this journal. But this is going to be a step to get me towards working in that journal even more. So I thought I would do the post-it notes, like I said, and I knew I wasn't going to get to it every day. So I just pulled out this, it's very inexpensive, nothing fancy tablet. And every time I bring something in, I weigh it and write it down. So like, here's raspberries, here's radishes, turnips, squash, yellow squash. And I just, keep writing it down. It's not pretty. It's just there. And then I will total it up for say the month of June, because that's kind of, I started at the last day of May. So I'm just going to say for the month of June, this is what we got. So I went ahead at this point and totaled up a couple of things. So I'm going to share that with you. So, so far, our yellow squash has given us 13.6 pounds of harvest. Our zucchini squash, 2.3 pounds. Our raspberries, we've already picked 10 pints. And we have mulberry trees. I haven't had all the time I wanted to pick them. So I had friends come and pick them. And I went ahead and calculated what they picked also because it was harvested from our trees. So we now have picked 10 pints of mulberries. I wanna say a thank you to my friend Rick who came out last night and he said, you know, you said you don't have time to pick. You didn't say you don't want to pick. So he came and picked me four pints of mulberries and that was so nice. I was out watering and pulling weeds and trimming tomatoes and whatever, and he just picked mulberries for me. So thank you so much, Rick. It's friends like that that really help when you have a garden going. There are times, and I'm going to show you something in just a few minutes. There are times I feel like I cannot do it. And it just helps when there's somebody that'll step in and say, let me do this part for you. So if you have a friend struggling with their garden, please jump in and help them. If you're struggling with yours, don't hesitate to ask. That is so important. Now, let's go see what we have going on outside. I want to show you just a brief, full-on view of the garden. It's all so very happy. So let me start here with the cucumbers. If you watched my video before, they were so little and now they're starting to climb and we have some blossoms, which will turn into cucumbers. They're doing great. As they get taller, I kind of work them in and out of this. I'll even take their tendril and kind of twist it around. It doesn't always stay but it gives it just that first little curve to know to grab a hold of there. Mm -hmm. 
this is my borage plant and I have been wanting to grow borage ever since we moved here and I just couldn't. And this thing is going crazy. It's going to be blooming very soon and it's going to be beautiful. We have a sunflower here next to it. These onions are the yellow of Parma and I just cannot even tell you they have grown so much just since my last video. They're beautiful. And then we have Chinese cabbage next to the onions and I really need to come in and process some of this and my problem is I just have not been able to do that this week because I've had a lot going on. So let me tell you the most exciting thing going on. In one of my last videos I said we're going to be having company and let me tell you who that is. And when I say company, mm, it's really they're moving in. Thomas, my son, and his wife Kaylee, who are the parents of Genesee and Tevya, which you have seen in my videos, um, they sold their house and they're not quite sure what they want to do next. So they are moving in with us until they can decide. So we will now have Thomas and Kaylee and Genesee and Tevya as well as my mother and my second oldest daughter lives in an apartment right behind our house so we see her quite frequently too so we will have eight people living in our home but we love the idea of being an intergenerational homestead that work together and help each other and encourage each other and hopefully bless each other through this time they will be moving in tomorrow which is saturday and next week even better we will be saying a big welcome to the ninth person that will be living in our house which will be baby zola and we are so excited genesee is just over the moon waiting to see her baby sister so we will have our hands full it will be crazy at times but what a blessing. Now, back to this garden. Next to the Chinese cabbage, we have regular cabbage, which I had considered pulling up, but it is beginning to head, and I'm really excited about it. I have never really had a lot of luck with cabbages, and these look like they're gonna do great. And of course, I still have yellow squash and zucchini squash. They are doing beautifully. They have lots of fruit on them. As you can see, lots of blooms coming on. And we have done a great job, as you heard earlier, in harvesting them. I try to harvest them smaller, like this one here would be a perfect size to me. So I will harvest some of these before I go in the house. Now I wanna show you an idea I had. I have garlic planted here, and when garlic gets to a certain size, it puts out what's called a garlic scape. And it looks like this. It kind of flips over and hangs upside down, and it has this little bulb on it. This bulb has seeds in it, but if you clip these off and eat them, they're really delicious. Last year, I made a lot of garlic scape pesto with mine, and I still have some in the freezer. So let me show you what I decided to do with these this year. I decided since garlic deters squash bugs, that I would just throw these in and amongst my squash plants. I tried to put some on each side. I have several garlics, and I'm hoping that that will help deter squash bugs. Along with the garlic, under this cow panel arbor, I have my tomatoes. These tomatoes have grown so much. The last time I showed you, they were probably half this size. They're doing really well. Let me go over here and show you these also. Now, 
what I did last night is I trimmed them up. I took their suckers off and their bottom leaves that were dragging the ground. And then I realized something. I always take a string and hang it from the top of the cow panel down to the tomato, stake it in the ground, and then wrap the string around the tomato to hold it nice and straight until it gets tall enough to weave in and out of the cow panel. When I planted these tomatoes, they were so tiny, there was no wrapping them. I didn't want to break them. Well, last night I realized how big they were and it dawned on me, I haven't wrapped them yet. So we're going to string them up even though they're bigger than what I usually do it. I'm going to use this mason line, which I like because it doesn't rot away like some of the jutes will by the end of the summer. I'm also going to use these tomato clips and I'll show you how I'm gonna use them, but Basically, let me show you on this line here. The tomato clip comes in and grabs the string in this little hinge and it closes around the stem of the tomato and holds the tomato in place while it's being strung. You'll see when I do it. Then I'm going to use these fabric stakes to hold the string down in the ground. So let's get busy. This holder I have is actually used with my sewing machine so that I can use serger thread while I'm sewing instead of little bitty spools. But I decided this would be great because it will just hold my spool and keep it from rolling all over the ground. And I can just pull and the string will come off. The first thing I need to do is make a knot. I'm just gonna kind of do one of these numbers and this will hold my stake through that. That's why I like these because they have such big heads. Now I'm just going to put that in the ground by my tomato. Now another reason you should do this while they're young is because then you're not going to put a stake into the roots and damage the plant but I think I'm gonna be okay. Now I'm going to take my tomato clip and clip it to my tomato. It doesn't hold tight. The tomato still has room to grow, but it holds the twine up here so you can start wrapping. Now I'm just going to wrap this around my tomato without breaking my little branches and then I don't want to knock my fruit flowers off then I'm going to run it up to straight above it see if you can see this straight above it onto the cow panel and I will tie it here in place so now this tomato is staked. It's clipped with a tomato clip, twisted around the plant, and then tied up onto the cow panel, ready to grow. Now only 41 more to go. Well, I'm glad that's done. And now I just have to finish the rest. But you know, sometimes it takes one to get you going. And then the rest you can just zoom through. But I'll come back to that in a little bit. Let me show you some other growth around the garden. Down here, we have the peppers. They have really grown. The green beans, they have lots of little flowers on them. They're getting ready to make beans. I can't wait. We have a sunflower here. <laughs> and I think I showed you this last time and it's grown incredibly. We have more peppers doing great and more green beans with lots more blooms that represent beans. My pumpkins have exploded. And as we walk over through the potatoes, 
you'll see the outdoor kitchen that we made the kids and I am so glad we did this because now they will be able to just play and have a great time while they're out here with me almost every day. I will leave a card that you can click on to see how we did this. I will also leave the links to all of the videos that I'm leaving cards for in the description box. So you can go there and check them out too. While we're walking down here, let me tell you what happened the other day, which it's still happening. So these are my potatoes. Uh oh, there's a bunny rabbit trying to get in and get my sweet potatoes. You just go on bunny. You don't need those. But look at the sweet potatoes, you guys. When I showed you last time, they were not very big. Some of them were pretty sad looking actually, but they are doing great. And along the jute rope there, I planted a row of okra. Now these are our regular potatoes and they are doing tremendous. I cannot wait to see what's under there. Over here, we have cantaloupe. We have little small sweet pumpkins and we have some watermelon that aren't doing great yet but they need that hot summer sun and we have been having some beautiful weather the last few days it was 60 when i woke up this morning the high today is 81 it is beautiful here is the tp that we planted for our grandkids and it is starting to finally send out tendrils and start growing and then I also planted sunflowers around it. Now this one is going to be a bigger sunflower, but these three are called chocolate cherries. And as you can see, this one is starting to bloom and they are such a beautiful color. They're a smaller sunflower and they have several different buds that will open. So that is gonna be so pretty. I'm going to kind of move them over and tie them to the tree so that they become part of the teepee. So this is our food forest. And I have told you that I really struggle with Bermuda grass in here. And I always just cover it up. And I decided I'm just gonna start taking it out. So this area right here, like from here up to there, and around these trees right in here was covered in Bermuda grass. So I came in with a shovel, I loosened it all up, and then I took it out, put it in a bucket and gave it to the chickens. So I got that much done, but let me show you what I still have to do. So I spent another hour working in this area all along in here, but, let me show you first of all let's look at these peppers and that mint and these peppers they're doing great in this composted hay now oh also look at these blackberries that are starting to come on now look at this bermuda grass you guys look how thick it is in there I was going to lay down this cardboard and cover it with mulch and cover it up. I did not have enough cardboard. Then I got the idea, forget the cardboard. I'm going to actually take this up, put the mulch somewhere else, and I am going to dig up the Bermuda grass. I'm gonna try it and see if I can then use my new hoe to just kind of go over it and break it off every time I see it. That's hard to do when it's on the cardboard. So that's what I'm gonna try this year. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but it's what I'm gonna try. But see how it kind of chokes out? I mean, it gets in there. That's my Asian pear tree, and it's gonna get all choked out, and it's getting all in the blackberries. But let me tell you another problem I have with my blackberries. You see, this branch is dead. Let me show you why. Something was, 
eating the bark off of my branch. I believe that something is a groundhog. So we are gonna have to set a life trap and capture him and then take him somewhere else far away so that he does not eat my garden. If you have a suggestion for groundhogs, let me know because I do not want him in here after I have all of my produce. My okra is coming up, but another problem we have in here is this bindweed, or I guess I heard it called trumpet weed because it has little trumpet flowers, but it's going to end up grabbing a hold of my okra and strangling it. It was all around my fig bushes, and I came out this morning. I didn't really have time to do it, but I did it anyway. And I pulled them, cleaned them all out around. Some of them had entangled themselves on my branches. So I untangled them, pulled all of them out and watered them really well. And this one over here was the same way. So I cleaned it all up. But again, look at this. Look at all this bindweed. And it's starting to bloom, which means they will be dropping seeds. So I need to get them out of here. My problem is I don't have enough time right now. But again, look at all of this Bermuda grass. It's horrible. I just am hoping that if I dig it up, then I can just kind of keep it under control. We do have another idea but I'm not gonna share that with you now. Something that we're going to try in the near future. So check future videos so that you'll see what our other plan is. I thought I would show you my front garden beds. I didn't bring you up here last time. They are doing wonderfully. Again, I need to process kale. I wanna freeze some and I want to dehydrate some and make kale chips. I've been picking it and giving it away every day and it just keeps growing. Also, my beets, they need to be processed. I want to can some, maybe freeze some. I don't know, I'm gonna have to look up some beet recipes. If you have a good beet recipe, please send it to me. I'd like to preserve some, but of course, there's always roasted beets, raw beets, all the good beet recipes for just eating them my lemon balm and echinacea are doing great the raspberries have totally exploded like i said i picked two pints today and as you can see they're ready to be picked again they have so many berries on them that i could pick them twice a day it's incredible the amount that they have and over here by the apple trees this yarrow has bloomed and it's just gorgeous i love this one so it's starting to fall over and you might have seen on my very first garden video where i dug up a huge comfrey plant right here and i said it'll probably grow back sure enough there it is i also planted some cantaloupe in the middle of the apple trees they did great last year and i'm doing it again apparently they're really good for the apple trees to plant melons by them and of course i have more comfrey that i just chopped down in order to chop and drop around my fruit trees in the back and they've already grown this much i cut them down to the ground and they're already back to this size here's the coreopsis in the front now that it is in full bloom and you'll remember that I transplanted some, so they are doing very well also. Everywhere I planted them, they're doing great. I need to really move more of these next year. Let me show you what's going on in the fern plant. Gotta be real gentle. There. Can't wait till there's baby birds in here just cheeping away. Genesee and Tevi are gonna love it. Thanks so much for joining me today. And be sure and check the description box for links to those other videos. 
And if you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And be sure and share my videos with people you think might be interested or encouraged or learn something from them. And until next time, blessings on you and yours.